was chubby little boy. Around seven, I think that's when he had his first lesson. I didn't really know how good I was when I was about 17. I kind of just had a growth spurt. All of a sudden, I started sliding and moving. I was like, I've been blessed. And then things got quite serious. Hey, if you're a tennis fan, you probably know already that Netflix are launching a brand new documentary series on the ATP and WTA tour. And I've been lucky enough to be sent the press screeners for the first five episodes. So without spoiling it for you, I'm gonna give you a little preview of what to expect and I'm gonna share my thoughts with you. Let's check it out. So Breakpoint is a brand new Netflix series made by the team that were behind Drive to Survive, which was an incredibly popular documentary series looking into the world of Formula One. This led to a huge increase in interest in Formula One. So this is an exciting opportunity for the tennis world. Now the series follows a number of players around the tour last year in 2022, starting at the Australian Open. Now the first five episodes that are going to be released lead all the way up until the French Open and there's going to be a further five episodes being launched in June which will follow the tour from Wimbledon all the way through to the end of the year. Now normally players like Rafa, Novak, Federer and Serena get all of the press and publicity but this series actually follows players that are slightly below that level that are looking to rise to world number one. Episode one follows Nick Kyrgios and Tanasi Kokonakis through their Australian Open doubles victory. Episode two looks at Matteo Berrettini and Isla Tomlanovic through their Australian Open campaign. Episode three moves on to Indian Wells where they follow Maria Sakari and Taylor Fritz. Episode four looks at how Paula Badosa and Ons Jaber got on at the Madrid Open. And in the final episode of this batch, they look at Felix Oja Aliassime and Kasper Ruud in their attempt to win the French Open. As a coach and a tennis fan, what I loved about all of these episodes was how you could have a look behind the scenes at what the pros get up to, not just at their tournaments, but back at home with their families as well. I was keeping a close eye on how the players interacted with their coaching teams, and of course, these all varied. In particular, I was really interested to see how Maria Sakari worked with her coach, Tom Hill, who's a young British coach who's doing amazing things with her on the tour. As well as that, there were some really interesting moments between Taylor Fritz and his coach, Paul Anacone, before his final where he played against Rafael Nadal at Indian Wells. And also an even bigger moment, which you might remember from the French Open, where Felix Auger Aliassime's coach, Tony Nadal, had to decide which player's box he was going to sit in when Felix was facing his nephew, Rafa. What the series really highlighted throughout was how isolated the players are when they're on the professional tour. Although at these events, there are hundreds of people, including the players and their teams, each player normally keeps themselves to themselves. Now, of course, there's a few more sociable players on the tour that do mix with other players, but generally, life on tour is very isolated and players naturally have to be very, very selfish. You'll see this within some of the interactions between players, including Matteo Berrettini and his then partner, Isla Tomlanovic. Now, just like Drive to Survive, Breakpoint was put together in a way that's going to attract new people into tennis. It's filmed in a very cinematic way as Netflix do this really, really well. But it also teaches non-tennis players things that they might not necessarily know, like how the scoring system works and how draws work in knockout tournaments, which is great if you want to watch this with your non-tennis playing friends. One thing I would say though, is it is rated a 15 as there is some fruity language in, especially in episode one with Nick Kyrgios, which for me is a little bit of a shame as I was hoping that this would inspire some of the younger generation, but I think it's aimed more at the older audience to try to get new people into the sport. In my opinion, the episodes got better and better throughout, so it's definitely worth watching all of them as some of the players in the first few episodes showed up in the later ones too. And I'm sure when the next batch are released, they're gonna be even better. In fact, I may even feature in one of the episodes. I don't know if you remember, but back in the summer, I was at Wimbledon and I was lucky enough to be invited into the IMG house, which was the player's gifting suite. Netflix were actually filming at that event. So it'll be really interesting to see if I'm in the background. Now, before you go, I want you to look out for the following if you get a chance to watch all five episodes. The first thing I want you to do is come back to this video and tell me which of these players you're most like. I want you to look at how tidy Matteo Berrettini keeps his room and Felix Oja Aliassime and tell me which one of those two players you're most like. Secondly, I want you to watch how Kasper Ruud and Rafael Nadal act in the tunnel before they go out to their French Open final. And I want you to tell me out of those two players, which one you're most like before a tennis match. And finally, Tony Nadal and Patrick Moratoglu share their views on where your loyalty should lie as a coach. And I want you to tell me your opinion on their views. 
So the series is out on Friday the 13th of January 2023 and if you get a chance I would definitely watch all five episodes and come back to this video and let me know what you thought. Take care, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.